This is Focus for Christ with Minister Amanda Lasmon, a program designed to inspire, motivate, and uplift you through music, testimonies, and the Word of God. today is the truth about the truth. The truth as we know it, the truth as has been handed down by our parents, our teachers, our schools. What exactly is the truth? What do you believe is the truth? What do you know as the truth? And above all, what is the truth according to the scriptures? So tonight we are joining with Reverend of Hathens on a our first edition, our topic for today is the truth about the truth. Join me as we welcome Reverend Ophelfans. Good evening, sir. Good evening. God Amanda. bless you. God bless you. It's too. an honor to you know work with you on this um, very series, the truth about. Sir, uh, what exactly? Do you, before we go into discussing what the truth about is about, can you please talk to uh, um, viewers a little bit about yourself? Yes, good evening uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Derek Kopelhoffens. I'm the resident pastor here in Christ Apostolic Church of God Mission, Liege, Belgium. And uh, the Lord laid it on my heart to do this program, The Truth About, because uh, so many people don't really know the truth. And without knowing the truth, you are not going to go anywhere. So this program is to help you to move forward in life and to make your life to be fulfilled so that you will never regret anything that you have done. Wow, God bless you, sir. Uh, so what exactly is the truth? If we really want to find out the truth, Amanda, we need to go into the Bible. And that is what we are going to start with. We are going to open up our... Bible to the Gospel of John, and we are going to read in John chapter 18, and we are going to read from verse 28 to 38, because that is where our Lord Jesus Christ mentioned the truth, and as this first program is the truth about the truth, so we need to find out the truth here. And so in John 18, 28, uh -huh. it says, Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. And Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered and said unto him, if he were not a malefactor, he would have not delivered him up to thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take you him, and judge him according to your own law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Then said the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which spoke significing the dead which he should die. And then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and then he called Jesus and said to him, Are thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus asked him, Says thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell thee of me? And Pilate answered, Am I Jew? The own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. And what dost thou, what dost thou have done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, so I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. And Pilate said unto him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest, I am a king. To this end I was born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I should be a witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth, hear my voice. And Pilate said unto him, What is the truth? And when he had said this, he went out 
against, again unto the Jews, and said unto them, I find no fault in him at all. Amen. 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 So, so we, um, for what you have read, what is the, the, how do I say it? What can, how can you explain it, or what can you say to this little person who doesn't, probably doesn't have a Bible, in a very short uh, word or explanation, what exactly is the truth? Yes, uh, I would like to say that, why was it so, so difficult for, for Pilate to find it. out yes. the truth? The reason why it was so difficult for Pilate to find out the truth was because of the way he was brought up. He was brought up as a Roman, he was brought up in the Roman culture that came out of the Greek culture, mm -hmm. and in those Roman culture they had the idea that the truth was a concept, or it was an idea. And so for Pilate to understand that the truth is not a concept or an idea, it was very difficult for him to grab it. He could not, he could not get it that the truth is a person. And the person's name, the name of the truth, is Jesus Christ. And Jesus said in the Bible, I am the truth. And so Pilate could not understand when he asked the question to Jesus. He said to Jesus, what is the truth? He could not grab it that the truth itself or himself, the truth himself, was standing right, right before him. Say. But he could not see it because of the way he was brought up. So, from your explanation, you're saying that um, the truth is not a concept or an idea, but a person. Why is it so? Yeah, the reason why the truth should not be an idea or should not be a concept is because the truth needs to be universal. The truth, if we really want to find out the truth, that truth should be the same in Belgium in America, in Africa, in Asia, mm -hmm. that truth should be the same yesterday, tomorrow, and, forever. and forevermore. If we really say this is the truth, that means the truth can never change. And therefore, the truth needs to be the word of one man. The truth can only be the word of one man, and that word that that one man spoke never changes. And it represents that one man. It, and it represents that one man, and mm. it is a truth that never changes. Uh, for example, when Jesus said, do not steal, that is a truth. That truth is the same here, is the same in Africa, is the same everywhere, and is a truth that never changes. So the truth is the word of one man that never changes. And that is why the Bible also tells us, my word is forevermore. It doesn't change. Yes, yes. My word is yes and amen. And so, for example, if Jesus said, do not steal, he was trying to make sure that you yourself don't become a thief. He protects you from becoming a thief and he protects the property of others. And so the truth is universal and it does not change. So it is dangerous to think that the truth can be an idea or a concept. What, what is the danger of thinking that the truth can be a concept or an idea? Yeah, it is quite dangerous and I, I, I want to give a, 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 an example of why it is so dangerous to think that a theory or a concept or an idea can be the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the Bible makes it very clear that God is our creator and that we are a creation of God and that God has made us in his own image and mm -hmm. his own likeness. Mm -hmm. And yet there is this truth that people believe that is the truth, that is an idea or a concept. Okay. Uh, that was uh, brought in about the theory of evolution by Darwin. Mm -hmm. And people, they take that theory as being the truth. Mm -hmm. And so the danger, the danger of that theory of evolution, mm -hmm. uh, we have all suffered it here in Europe. You know, when the, when the theory of evolution came, mm -hmm. the theory of evolution said it is the survival of the fittest. The theory of revolution says the truth is it is only the strong that survive. Yes. And so based on that truth, 
which is not the truth, but based, based on, on that, fact. based on that idea, yes. based on that idea, mm -hmm. based on that concept of evolution, mm -hmm. being that only the strong will survive, Hitler came out and mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. "We need to make a strong German race. We need to make the German a, okay. a Ubermensch. The Germans need to be the strong race." And therefore, we have to eliminate every weak vessel. So, the, 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 the fact that people accepted the theory of evolution as the truth gave him a go-ahead to, to go and kill the handicapped, go and kill uh, the gypsies, go and kill the Jews. Because of the survival of the fittest. Because of the survival of the of fittest. Course, because yeah. of the survival of the strong race. And so, uh, the whole idea, the whole concept of the survival of the fittest and the strong race is not the truth. But a yes, it's, it's, it's a theory it's and an right, idea. Yeah. The thing is that the real truth is that God did not put us on this earth to survive. You know, oh. God did not put us on the earth to survive, but God put us on this earth to live and to live life in abundance. And therefore, as we are not here to survive, but to live, we can now accept the truth from God, that is the truth, that we are not here to survive, or to struggle, or to be the strongest, but we can live, and live it according to God in abundance. And therefore we see that in the real truth, the, weak, the strong are there to take care of the weak. And that is why we see at the end of the war, the truth still prevailed. Wow. The truth still prevailed over the false truth. The false truth is that we are here with the idea of the survival of the strongest. And only the strong will survive. But the war itself proved to us that it was a false idea, that it was not the truth. The truth, yeah. the truth was that God put us on earth to live and to have life in abundance. And at the end of the war, it were the strong people, the allies, the strong people, who took care of the weak. Okay. And they came to save the weak out of the hand of the wicked. And so we see that the truth had victory over the idea or the concept or the false truth. Mm -hmm. So, according to uh, Darwin's theory and a lot of other things that you've just said, the, there were facts that were presented to show us that or to, to, to convince us that life is about the survival of the fittest yeah. and then they uh, at the end the truth overcame that so the truth and the fact are not the same thing or are they the same thing no exactly many people think that the facts and the truth are the same thing mm -hmm. you know it can be a fact for example that today you are poor that is a fact mm -hmm. or today it is raining it is raining today, yeah. that's a fact. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that it will rain tomorrow? No. no. Tomorrow the sun may shine. Today you may be poor, tomorrow you may be rich. So the facts are completely different from the from truth. The truth. And so when we are having a judgment, we should not base ourselves on the facts, but on the truth. And therefore Jesus said, being the truth, I will judge you in truth. And so he doesn't base his judgment on the facts. Okay. He bases his judgment on the truth. When he called the woman in adultery, mm -hmm. the fact was that she, she was an adulteress. Yes, she did it. She did it. Mm -hmm. That was the fact. But Jesus did not base his judgment on the fact. Jesus based his judgment on the truth. And the truth was, the question he asked her, he said, woman, are you ready to repent? The truth was she was ready to change. Are you ready not to what change? Has happened, but not what has happened, but what are you going go to do now? Here? Where do we Where go, do we from, go here? from here? And therefore we see that the, the truth is the only one that can set us free. You can put somebody, judge somebody, put the person in jail. That is not going to change the person unless the person receives the truth accepts the truth. But why is it so difficult sometimes for people to accept the truth? Because Jesus said many things and it, sometimes you see that it is actually difficult for people to accept those things that he said. Why is it difficult for people to accept the truth? 
Yes, so the reason why people find it so difficult to accept the truth is that from the moment you accept the truth, from the moment you accept it, that means you are ready for a change. Because if you accept the truth, that means you need to change. The woman caught in adultery, she had to accept the fact that she was a sinner. And as she accepted the fact that she was a sinner, and she was now ready to change, then the truth set her free. Then she could now be in liberty. And that is the true liberty. The truth tells us the true liberty is to live a life outside of sin. Um, I, I want to ask you a question, and that is, can people find out the truth for themselves? But I want to say something on what you just said. So the reason it is difficult for people to accept the truth is that when we accept the truth, it's like shining the light on our shortcomings, on those things that we need to change. Because if you tell me stealing is not good, and I know that I have just stolen before coming here, when I accept from you that stealing is not good, it means I have to shine my light on what I did before coming here. And in order to hide or uh, not, maybe not hide or to cover up what I have done, I'll, tell, I'll try to convince you that stealing is not really that bad. Mm -hmm. After all, maybe I, I took it because I was hungry or tried to speak good of the things that I did because I don't want to face the truth. Mm -hmm. So people don't accept the truth because they don't want to shine the light, light on the things that need change in their own lives. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Wow. But, mm -hmm. oh, go on, go on. Yeah, the, the light and the truth are actually uh, like one. Because when the truth comes, the light also comes. And the truth and the light are two things that you cannot disconnect from each, wow. from each other. That's wow. why Jesus said, I am the truth and I also am the light. Mm. And so they, they are both part of his personality and you cannot separate them from each other. Okay. Light and truth, they go together. And the Bible makes it clear to us that the reason why people don't like the light is because they love darkness. They, don't, they are not ready for a change. It's more comfortable yes. to hide. It is more comfortable to, to make up another lie, to cover up the former lie. So people uh, go from bad to worse. If you, if you see people today in the street that are on alcohol or people who are drugs addicted, it didn't happen overnight. It went step by step and uh, they, they, they went into it step by step. Why is it so? Because they could not face the truth. They could not handle the truth. Most of the time, they, they, they run into those things because they try to hide themselves from the truth. But can people actually find the truth for themselves? Or yeah, can, can people find the truth for themselves? Yes, yes. Oh. I, want, I want to invite everybody to get to know Jesus more better. Mm -hmm. I want to invite everyone to go into that personal relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to invite people to read their Bible. I want to invite people to get to know Jesus as their intimate friend. Because when you get to know Jesus as your intimate friend, He's the one who will help you to be able to take the change. When He met with a woman that was caught in adultery, she found out that this man really loves me. Because He didn't judge her according to the facts. Mm -hmm. Jesus never judges anybody according to the facts. The only thing Jesus is asking from anybody is, are you ready for a change? That's actually what Jesus asks you and I today. Are you ready for a change? When you say, yes, I'm ready for a change, then Jesus will send His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to make that change become a reality. Amen, amen, amen. But for someone, you say, um, read your Bible, make the Lord your personal, uh, make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. That is easy, that would be easy to understand for somebody who is already, probably not born again, but has an idea of what, you know, serving the Lord is, has contact with the church, with the family, or, or someone who knows Christ a little bit. What about somebody who doesn't know anything, or has no relationship? Because I, I listen to people who, um, are probably Christians and they tell you um, 
But when I read the Bible, I don't understand it. How can they actually find out that there are two questions in this? How can a person who has no idea what Christ is all about get to find this truth? That's that one you have explained. But for somebody who says, I am a Christian, I go to church, but when I read this word, I don't understand it. What can they do so that the Holy Spirit can actually, you know, explain this um yeah, the truth to them, that they can really, really understand it. Not, like I would say, not the English version of the Bible. Because sometimes you read a, a, a scripture, yes, you understand the English version. It says, do not steal. But sometimes the, the, the Holy Spirit brings you to a deeper understanding of what that scripture is actually talking about. So for somebody who is not uh, conversant with the things of God, what can they do? How can they reach out and, and, and get the same truth? Yeah, that what is very about. important in life is that you really open the door of your heart mm -hmm. for the Word of God to come into you. The, the Bible is not never going to make sense if you let it be a book. The Bible is not just a book, the Bible is a living word. Okay. And so you, you need to allow the life that is in the Word and the Spirit to come into you. And therefore you need to open up your heart for, for the truth. And the woman who was at the well and met with Jesus, uh, the woman, she didn't have the Bible like we have it today. Mm -hmm. She didn't have the Bible like we have it, but she had a personal confrontation at the okay. well. And I think there are times in life when Jesus uh, confronts you with the truth. Okay. It may be a very drastic uh, moments in life that uh, the Lord will use to visit you. And when you open up your heart at that time, the Lord will, will step into it. So you really need to open up your heart for God so that God can come and do the work He wants to do in you and to really set you free by making you to know the truth. Thank you. I think that the next question I'm going to ask uh, probably has the same answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. For a person, you know, like I said in the beginning of the program, mm -hmm. we know the truth. Mm -hmm. Us was handed down by our parents, by our teachers, by ourselves, the things that we discovered along the way and, 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 and think, well, this is the truth, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Those things are probably facts. Those things are probably the things that we think we discover that by ourselves. Beliefs. And then you begin to study the Word of God and discover that there is a conflict between the truth as I knew it and the truth according to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we struggle with leaving the facts that we knew and exchanging it with this truth that we have just discovered in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. When somebody is, if, when somebody finds themselves in that kind of situation, what can we do? How, how do we deal with that? Because I know what I was taught. I know what I see in the Word of God. But there is a conflict. There is, I can't let go what I know. Mm -hmm. I want to accept the one that I know now is the truth. How do I? reconcile how do i get rid of that thing that has been imprinted in my head yeah well you really have to open up like i said you really have to open up your heart wide if you see the scripture we just read in the beginning of the program you see the the jews uh, came into the uh, the office uh, of Pilate. Mm -hmm. they didn't want to step into the petroleum because they wanted to keep themselves clean that was their belief that is what they thought was the truth they thought the truth was that they could keep themselves clean by not stepping into the praetorium of the Romans. If they, if they would step in there, their belief was that they would defile themselves. And, and the truth of the matter is that it is not true. You can step into that place without being defiled. It is what you have in your heart that will determine. Yes. And so, if we really want to be set free, if we really want to have the truth, we have to allow our heart 
to be cleansed out. We have, we have to allow the Word of God to do its transforming work in us. We have to let self go. We have to, we have to let religion go. Hmm. We have to get rid of religious thinking. We have to allow the Spirit of God to work in us and to change and to make us back into the glory Amen. of our Creator. Amen. I was just going to ask you that, that sometimes you see great men and women of God who you listen to their teachings and they are speaking the truth. But in some areas they are bound by church doctrines. Mm -hmm. They are bound by beliefs of the past. They are bound mm -hmm. by things of the past. But you have just answered it. I think that we all need to really soak ourselves into the things of God and allow the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to do the transforming because it's not something that can happen in one day. I think that is um, something that happens with time as you soak yourself in the things of God and fellowship with Him. Uh, what's your take on that? Yes. The Bible says that without Him we can do nothing. And then, the thing is that uh, without Him we don't even have life. Mm -hmm. Because the life is in the Word of God. The true life, the eternal life. And uh, Jesus came to give us that. He came to give us eternal life through His Word. Amen. And so, when, when we start having the Word of God in us, Amen. we will we'll have eternal life in us. And therefore, when Jesus said, let the dead go and bury the dead, Amen. today's All Saints Day, as we are recording this program, <laughs> it happens to be All Saints Day, people are going to cemetery and visit, go the, and dead. visit the dead and put flowers there. But the truth of the matter is, let the dead bury the dead, and let those who are ready to leave, mm -hmm. let them, let them leave, let them accept mm -hmm. the love of God that comes through the Son and through the sacrifice of His blood. Amen. Mm. Amen. So, viewers, uh, we've come to the end of our program for today. Uh, the Reverend Papa Fels is going to pray for us before we leave. But before then, I just want to say thank you very much for joining us today. Next time. What will be talking about? We are going to talk about the truth of the church. Truth about the church. If you have questions, if you have any doubts, if you have something that you've always wanted to know, or something that you've always had a doubt about, send us your questions. And the email address to send it to is truth.about at gmail.com. Send us your, your, your questions or send it to me. On my Facebook, if you do not have a Gmail account or anything, and you're my friend on Facebook, you can also send it. Or you can put it on the comment section. We will always get it and answer your question. Until we meet again, remember, this is the truth about. And it is solely designed to bring you the truth, bring you answers to those things you've had questions and doubts about, according to the Word of God. Not according to what I say or according to what Reverend says, but according to the word of God. God bless you. Reverend, please, can you pray for us Amen. Uh, before we go? But before you pray, um, there is someone out there who doesn't know Christ. Before you pray for us to know the truth, there is someone out there watching right now who does not know Christ at all. He cannot search for the truth if he doesn't even know of the existence of the truth. Mm -hmm. Can you please help us lead that person to Christ and then pray for the, for everyone else and all of us so that we can understand the truth. Amen. So to the person listening to us now and you have no clue what Jesus is all about, I just want to let you know that you are not what people say about you. You are not what you are doing but you are the beloved child of God and therefore because you are the beloved child of God that is why God gave his son on the cross not as somebody who was killed but as a living sacrifice he laid down his life for you and I that through his blood we might be saved so if God can send his only son to come and die for you and I that means that you are very precious so if you are out there and you are not feeling fine, 
you are doubting whether you should continue to live, you are just doubting, am I really here for a purpose? I want to let you know, yes, you are here to glorify the name of the Lord. And God has called you, and God loves you, and that is why He sacrificed His only begotten Son. And so I want to invite you to open up your heart for the Lord so that He can step in, and that you may be saved. God has not put you here to suffer. God has not put you here that you will just die like that. No, God has put you here for a purpose, and that purpose needs to be fulfilled. And as you open up your heart for God, God will come in and fulfill the purpose of your life. Amen. And so therefore we want to pray. Father in heaven, we thank you because you are the one who gives us the truth. And Lord Jesus is the truth. You gave us your son that we may be free because Jesus is the truth. And through him we have life. And Lord Father, therefore we want to pray that anyone who has watched this program and who felt in his heart that something, something has been changed, something has been shaken. Lord Father, give that person the strength to send us an email, sir. To send us an email at thetruth.aboutgmail.com so that we can continue to build up the faith, O oh Father, and that those who are changed, they may be put in freedom through the truth, because the Bible makes it clear to us, and they shall know the truth, and the truth shall set them free. Amen. 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 May God bless you until we meet again. This is Amanda Passman. Bye. And this is Reverend Derek Ophoff. And until we meet again, keep Amen. watching Vocals for Christ TV. God bless you.